everybody, this is PJ Riley from Lancaster Archery here on the floor of the 2020 ATA show. Exciting news here, of course I'm standing with John Dudley. John Dudley, you've announced it to the world, you are now PSE. Yep. You've made the switch. Tell us, walk through, I'm, I know there's a whole long decision process, but oh, yeah. give us kind of the high points of it, why you switched. Well, the main reason I switched is just having the ability to, to do something with our community that I would have never been able to do at any of the other bow companies. Um, when I did my podcast with Pete, I stayed with Pete and his wife, Laura, and just through conversation, I actually uh, brought a Traeger there and I cooked for him. And, <laughs> of you know, course you did. Yeah, and I wanted to, I wanted to, to, I wanted to get to know a legend, right? Because I mean, PSE celebrating 50 years, Pete's the only living compound, you know, bow legend left, right? So, I mean, for me, this was an awesome experience to be able to stay at Pete Shepley's house, have him tell me stories about things, and then through that, just get to know him a little bit more outside of the podcast, which I think made the podcast better. But one of the things that was very, very evident is his passion to to grow archery and to make sure people get into archery and stay in archery. And he was a little bit familiar with kind of our followers and kind of their passion. And what's funny is we went to PSC to tour the facility and when I went in there, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, the last time I was in that PSC facility, I was there with Randy Chapel and uh, Frank Pearson, I remember watching D Wild shooting in like all white, you know, <laughs> there was uh, Terry Ragsdale was there, Terry and Michelle Ragsdale were both there. Um, I got to see Terry building a bow that he was getting ready to take to Vegas. Um, so, I mean, it was, there's like this aura, when, you know, when you walk into that type of thing. And as I was there talking with Pete in the corner, Archers from in the range heard my voice and they were they were like, is that John Dudley? And they came over and they were showing me that their bows that they had set up themselves and hey, can you check this out? You know, I put my first rest on the bow or, you know, hey, I restrung this myself. And and then I, I grabbed their bows and I shot a little bit, you know, and said, you know, all this looks good. And I think for Pete, it clicked at that time too. You know, this guy, has people that are legitimately listening to, to what's going on and honestly that's when the seed was planted because Pete was saying I really you know I've come back in I've kind of cleared house you know I've got a great team and I want to be on top again and uh, I'm a very loyal person so there was several hard no's um, you know and to be honest with you, Pete and I have a mutual friend that was the one that was constantly like, what do you need to make this happen? What do you need? And finally, I just threw a hypothetical out there of, I want the ability for our followers and our communities to be able to have a place to go as a headquarters for free shooting seminars or, you know, if they buy bows, they can go there and do their own setups, you know, with us as a team or the ability for me to do uh, survey monkey projects where people can design and concept bows with me and I'm bringing bows to market that me or us as a as a community want not what you guys make internally and I just put a, a graphic on the limb right and every single time I threw something out there it was just like we can do that we can do that and nice. you know Pete's one of these guys where I feel like if I played poker with him, he's going to be pushing <laughs> chips in and just saying all in a lot, yeah. you know, whether or not, whether or not he's bluffing, I don't really know. Um, but what I do know is it was a very tough thing. And if I'm perfectly honest, um, I had multiple, multiple long-term contracts with Hoyt. And each one of those contracts, at the tail end of them, I was approached by other good companies. And it was never really an option. Um, this last year, the same thing was included. There, you know, PSC wasn't the only person talking. Um, but the reality is this thing was bigger than me. You know, it was right. bigger than me. It was, it's a community. I have a lot of other people to, to think about. And 
And, and this was the option for us to be able to go somewhere where they recognize the importance of free information, helping me, you know, helping me do a better job of getting that information out there because the reality is it got so big to the point where I was overwhelmed and I don't feel like I can keep up. You know, I, sure. I really don't. And I feel like they're at the position where they want the company to get back to where it needs to be and my hat's off to them for saying, okay, well, what do we need to do to, to help all this thing grow together? And in the end, you know, it, it became a partnership, not a pro staff deal. In, in the line of your talking about, you know, getting free information out there, I mean, you're on there on YouTube, you've got your channel on there where you do all kinds of tuning, bow sets up, bow setups, uh, shot you know, sequences, that type of stuff that you yeah. just put out there. I mean, then that's, I don't know how many people we hear of, hey, I was watching the John Dudley video and mm -hmm. he said to do this, you know, or that. I mean, that's important to you, obviously, and you just put it out there. It's including with your podcast, information sharing. Yep. Yeah, what I really appreciate about our followers is that um, the message I gave since podcast number one was, you know, bringing all archers together regardless of the style of archery or the style of bow you shoot, right? And our community is that way. I feel like when I look into some of those threads, we have people that are Matthews guys, people sure. that are Hoyt guys, people that are Prime guys, you know, people that are elite guys or gals, you know, and there isn't like this, these lines being drawn about who's shooting what. Um, I was overwhelmed with the response of when I made that that podcast last week, letting people know that I was no longer going to be with Hoyt because that was a very, very hard thing for me. Sure. Uh, but the truth is, the first bow I ever bought was a PSE. Um, I shot a PSE and it, it shaped, you know, me learning to love archery was from age 10 to 17, you know, and other than shooting a, a high country for a brief period uh, in between the PSEs and, and working for Matthews for a long time, um, I really like the bows. I mean, I, I worked for an archery shop. We sold a lot of XLR 900s <laughs> and, you know, G-forces and mocks, you know, some of the very first mocks, you know, like Mach 3s and Mach 4s and 5s. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I'm returning back to my roots and the majority of the people that I've told that are closest to me that I kind of bounced hypotheticals off of, what do you think about me shooting a PSC? I don't know if anyone did not say, my first bow is a PSC. Yeah, for you sure. Know? And at least and maybe that's our age category because obviously now there's you know there's companies that have moved in where people's first bow was a matthews or first yeah bow was right a Hoyt, right right but at least for the people i know and i trusted that was really important and honestly uh jerry carter is someone who you know he's He's like a dad to me. Mm -hmm. And I talked to Jerry Carter uh, several months back and I said, what would you think about me shooting a PSE? And Jerry's like, I shoot a PSE. And I go, <laughs> are you kidding me? And he goes, no, he said, for like older people that need, you know, he goes, I pull low poundage. Right. He said, the cams feel so good. Yep. He goes, I shoot better with it. It's a great bow for me where I'm at and honestly, from there on out, I just started shooting certain models and kind of fell into a model that fit me well, but also fit some friends around me well that that adjusted very easily. And, you know, that that Evo model is pretty much the footprint of, you know, where we've ended up now. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about. So you, you mentioned that you have these ideas for bows. You've only been with PSE for a very short time, and yet, you have this bow here. Tell us about it because they produced it just in the short amount of time yeah. with a lot of things that you put into it. Yeah. Let's talk about this bow. What is it? Well, one of the things that I haven't gone into great detail about is, you know, when I started at Matthews, I was 19 years old. And, you know, we were a small company then growing rapidly. Um, I was a shooter, you know, and I was internal. So, 
I was very fortunate to be there when Matt was still in like within the walls of the main facility. And so as Matt would concept and you know have people shooting bows, I was one of the very few people that you know got to see that process and got to look at I guess some of his the way his mind worked towards navigating things and and I even though I don't have an engineering background I have an idea of I've seen it enough times where I said well why wouldn't you do that and right. it's just like well that won't work and a lot of that stuff stuck so I'm definitely an idea person and I know what works and what what doesn't work I'm not the person that can actually program it and put it to use yeah whereas PSE is a factory that they can do every single thing internally and even their new carbon bow is a hundred percent made in America right, right? Um, so their ability to I gave them 10 things, including a couple of cosmetic, you know, decal things, but I gave them yeah. 10 things that I wanted to see changed on an Evo 33 um, to where I felt like I was going to be able to bring forward a product that had some things that were different, but also had things to where people that follow me and how I set up bows, um, they would understand like, okay, he did these, these are changes that he put to use right. and honestly for them to be able to uh, to have this thing ready uh, this fast all the bows came yesterday and they unboxed them at the at the truck the decals actually came in this morning uh, a couple of them weren't <laughs> didn't make it but one of them did uh, but I feel like this is just the beginning and if our community wants to go forward and design a better bow, then I can put that in front of them, and, and now we have yeah. the ability and the keys to do that. So this is the Evo Nation NTN 33. Yep, that's the yep. name of the bow. Yep. Talk about some of the things that you put into there, because I know bow hunters are going to appreciate oh, yeah. Yeah. what so, you've done, what you asked for. So the first uh, Evos that I shot, I shot a, a shorter one and a longer one. Um, the 33 is really the the best one uh, for the size. You know, I think for the broadest spectrum of draw length sizes, people that are 31 and over for draw lengths, they're gonna hate me right now, but <laughs> bear with me. Um, but what I did was, there was a few things that I had to navigate first based on the types of accessories that I mount to the bow first. Right. Um, I really like the Elevate Rest that I've had out. This is gonna be something that's now gonna be implemented into some of the PSE dealers. Mm -hmm. But we changed the, the cutout of the in of the the riser shelf to where the taper actually slants down and comes across a little sharper right. now so that as your wider whale tail and right. this is the same for several rests that have a wider whale tail you're not touching on the right side mm -hmm. and then the over left here. side being tipped over yep um, so it's able to actually lay flat and that that angle's been made it's it's dished out a little bit deeper yeah. but there's also like a slight rise on the riser uh, for that landing pad sure the other thing is I really feel like people that shoot a, a limb driven style rest like myself having some type of an arrow trough at yep. the front of the riser is very user friendly it's so, nicer than just like the cups that are there because they come off yep yep the troughs not I mean ours anywhere. has an automatic arrow holder sure. but for the most part some people don't use that some people have a different arrow rest but it will be dished out the production ones will actually be slightly wider than this first generation that I have here mm -hmm. and there'll be some type of a silencing material that we'll finalize in the next month or so of what that's going to be the other thing is I went to two arrow rest uh, burger button holes right. so that you can actually lock down that secondary mount. Yeah. Um, I think that's nice area, yeah, I think too. that's really important. Yep. Um, you know, it seems like the more you bear down on a rest, the more it's going to it's going to kick up. Yeah. Obviously, uh, one of the things that is important to me as well is, you know, this particular Sherlock I've shot for 20 years or more, you know, Gibbs made it for me. Uh, but what I did was I removed the multiple sight holes yeah. that the Evos had and several PSEs have. Um, personally, I feel like for the people that are going to shoot this particular model within their draw length spectrum, 
they're not going to need those lower holes or the higher holes based on you know what site companies are making now. And by doing that, we were able to change some of the riser hole cuts because one thing that was really important to me was to completely embed the cable rod system into the riser so that when you tighten down on that cable rod, you don't have to worry about it having any type of slippage. Right. Um, and what we've done is myself and the engineers, we all pretty much voted on what is that exact range of where we want the inside cable clearance to be in order to clear a high profile vein, but also still minimize your torsional twist you know, sure. on the riser. Um, I think down the road, I might do something different in this area, but for right now, again, I'm just trying to work with what I have. Sure. The other thing is we had to really focus on putting it in a position to where if you did have a site like this, which it's what I'm shooting, so yeah. I wanted to make sure I still had clearance yep. for these styles to, to mount on there, mm -hmm. but also for this to be above your knuckles, you know, for for letting down the bow. Right. So some of it seems simple, but it's things that are important uh, to look into. Talk about this harness down here first, because yeah, I was just switching anybody who set up limb-driven rests, yep. I mean, we've seen people do this, but there's never been a specific attachment for yep. it. Talk about that. Yeah, so what I did was um, on the first Evos they sent me, um, I actually took the composite piece that was there and drilled it out and cleaned it up a little bit so that I could run my limb driven attachment right to the center yes. uh, cable splitter. Um, in production, you'll have this to where there'll be holes on both sides as well if you're right or left handed. Right. Um, but this one, it minimizes the length of the cord. So, yep. you know, you're going to have less overall stretch to worry about. Also, even just vibration mm -hmm. within a longer string. Um, obviously, from a consumer point of view, it's you're not going to have to worry about any marring on your limb. Or it's sliding. Be, yeah, they or always sli slid. Or sliding. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is depending on that limb angle um, or like on some of the target bows where the limbs are more vertical, yeah. the over travel is what's breaking fall away blades because it's over traveling so far that it's compressing that blade yeah. further than where you have it in this position here. So there's just way less over travel with that. Um, it's a very clean system. When you have your quiver on, you have way less interference because it's going directly in. Yeah. Um, it doesn't put any extra pressure on the cables in this particular configuration. So, you know, I'm really happy with it. You I love can, that. <laughs> yeah, you can remove the grip, shoot directly off the riser, which I personally have been doing. Yeah. Uh, but if you want a little bit warmer feel in hunting situations, you can put on uh, the grip that they have, which is nice. And uh, now we have your <laughs> yeah. little setup so, down Yeah, there. one thing I've always <laughs> wanted to do was, uh, I've always wanted to drill and tap a riser to a specific angle to be able to incorporate a kickstand for either shooting in the range or I do a lot of hunting out of a blind now. Right. Um, if you're in a you know a muddy blind or a redneck blind, the this system works super awesome. I had done it on a few of my bows and kind of kept it quiet. You know, I was thinking of ways to do it. Um, but what we did was we figured out for this riser how this thing's weighted. We have that angle, and what's nice about it is you can. We're gonna have these little kits, but it's easier for easy for you to make it yourself. But yeah. essentially, these are arrows. Um, on sure. one of the arrows, you've got a, a female receiver to where you'd be able to, you know, screw this arrow together and put it in your quiver, and yeah. you have a, a kickstand available uh, wherever you need it. Honestly, I've shot with this quite a bit and haven't had any problems with it. Um, it doesn't it's not the, on the limb, yeah. so you don't have to worry about yeah, that. It doesn't you know? have the vibration. All you got to do is set down your cam, lean the bow forward. Uh, works pretty dang slick. Yeah, that uh, is. I really liked the Evo cam system. I can tell you that I was, I was pretty impressed with the fact that these bows were very under-evaluated in the market, if I'm honest. Um, 
I feel like some of my very close friends, Mike Slinker, Jerry Carter, these guys were telling me that they love shooting their PSEs, and they kept saying they just don't get the exposure that they need to have. Mm -hmm. And when I shot them, I realized, you know what? These cam systems are super user friendly. Yes. Um, they feel great. The ability to move that cam stop to be able to go from an 85, you know, 80, 85, 90, 90. let off percent yeah. uh, is awesome. Or if you switch to the, the lower let off modules, you can go from that 65 to the 75 percent. Sure. So it's super user friendly. The draw range and the efficiency that that cam is keeping at all of those draw ranges is is pretty impressive. You know, yeah. there's. There's a lot of cam systems out there to where once you move through that spectrum of draw length, sure. there's like either a rapid decline in performance or a rapid incline in like an unfriendly feeling of the cam, yeah. right? Um, this cam system really has addressed that. And, you know, I guess the last thing to talk about is um, this is the first product that the knock-on uh, series of bows is going to be available with Subalpine. Um, Sitka. Yeah, yep. Sitka is a an amazing brand for the community. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's several out there. You know, there's probably going to be options for people to have uh, uh, other camos down the road. But for now, and at least for our followers, you know, I felt like it's important for them to have what I feel like is our identity, which is you know. The first uh, drab green riser yes. that matches, you know, some of those Pantones of the subalpine pattern. And again, this is something that we had a very short period of time to bring forward to the market. Well, that's what's incredible. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about no time. You, you yeah. just announced yeah, today. Yeah, I can tell you, David Cronengold <laughs> is a superstar and his team. And you uh, even put your touches on the Mach 1. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, the this is more bow. of a cosmetic touch, sure. so to speak. Um, with something as complex as this, there's certain things that you have limitations to. Yeah. Um, obviously, like, you know, the newer cable rod system, you know, embedding that into that carbon riser right there would be, you know, a tough, a yeah. tough seven day move. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas putting our color schemes on something that at least allows people to move into a high-end carbon model if they choose and still have, you know, the look of what our followers, I think, are going to appreciate. Um, but overall, this, this Stealth Mach 1 is an awesome product. And if you pick it up, you almost don't even believe what you're holding, right? Super light. I mean, it's incredible. And what's important to me is it's 100% made in America. Right. You know, this carbon is assembled in PSE. Uh, and I feel like, at least for the big push that I'm passionate about of military people that are coming into bow hunting as a way to help them deal with some of the things that they have to deal with, unfortunately, in their yeah. daily lives, returning back home. Uh, there's just too many times where I've seen people go on their first hunt and train for, you know, essentially a mission again, and it changes their lives. So I'm gonna have a very, very big uh, initiative and push for the military community. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of partnerships with Black Rifle to get into some military bases and be able to bring archery to them. And I think stories like these, where these are 100% made in America, I think it fits the bill. You know, overall, like I said, the move for me is was larger than, than me. Right. Um, the hardest thing about it was me personally being able to deal with having to sever ties with someone that was, that was like sure. family. And, and honestly, the amount of people from Hoyt that have came to me from within the company just since I've been here at the show floor and last night in the hotel and you know it's been it's been all hugs and and congratulations and you know there's even you know even some Matthews guys came over and you know told me like it's been a long time coming and um, I really don't want to look at it that way I want to just I want to just enjoy the ability to to have some keys to drive a cool car and be able to see what mods we can do to it to work well for, for my friends and 
one and community. And talk briefly about how impressive it is to you that you you mentioned a couple of things and they basically turned it around in no time. I yeah, mean, yeah. John Dudley says something. This is what he likes. Boom, here it is. Yeah, it was it was a pretty um, it was a pretty tough six months. I was very open and honest with Hoyt about what was in front of me, um, and they you know they knew it was something that was it was just a completely different card game. It wasn't yeah. a matter of them have not having the cards. It was a matter of this was a different, you know, Pete brought a different game forward. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, I seen in a few comments, someone's like 50 years in, Pete's still got it, you know. <laughs> Hats off to him for, for saying, yeah, let's, you know, let's double down and, and make this happen. Uh, it was hard for me to know that I was going to be transitioning. And one of the things that a conversation I had with Mike Looper back in August was he, you know, I said, my contract expires December 30 or December 31st at midnight. And I said, I'm going to give you the best season I've, I've ever had. And I said, I'm going to mash the pedal and I want to try to set an example to what I feel like, you know, the ambassador community should be doing. And that's fulfilling their agreements with people. And, uh, I'm, I mashed the pedal and, you know, within the the last night I was able to hunt with a Hoyt. You know, I, I shot an, an absolute giant whitetail that came out at last light. 50 yard shot, you know, <laughs> the green knock right through the through the heart. And um, and I, I felt like the only way I can tell everybody what's going to happen is to is to share with them that recovery. That was right. my honest feelings of. I really don't know how to deal with this yet. You know, I just know that for 14 years, this company has delivered tens on the target range, tens on animals I've shot at. They've been like friends and family, sure. but I'm excited to to go somewhere where now, you know, it's a, it's a new chapter. It's a new chapter, and um, well, I appreciated what you mentioned in your podcast where you said it doesn't have to be that you're leaving because something's wrong. It's just because two people want two different things. Yep, I appreciated that because yeah. that's that doesn't mean anybody's done anything wrong. It's no. just you got no. something else you want to do. No, no one did. Right? Yeah, it was just one of those things where you know, and I told Randy Walk to uh, Randy and I had a great conversation on the phone back in September and I said, you know, Randy, I don't know how I can tell you what you can do because this isn't in Hoyt's cards. And and Randy was just super appreciative and, you know, said that he really he really respected um, you know, me being so forward with them and he really he felt like if if there was a risk out there that was gonna be taken, he's like, you're the perfect person to do it and he said, I wish you the best. There's not a lot of people that that would have the guts to, to go forward with something like this. And he said, I really respect that. And, and he said, and you know, you've always got a place here because you, you've been, you know, such a model ambassador for us. And, you know, I want to, I told Pete when I made the decision to move to PSC, my decision was to retire there. You know, I'm, you know, I'm 43. Um, I was, with Matthews for 10 years and, uh, you know, with Hoyt for 14. Uh, the truth is, would I love to be at the three privately held bow companies that are still, you know, which to our industry, this is very important that we still have those. To be at those three places during the times where, you know, hopefully they've all hit their apex I would love to retire knowing that I was at Matthews during the heyday, I was at Hoyt during the heyday, and I was able to bring PSE back to something to where when Pete finally decides to to not be president at PSE where he's like, you know what, this is the healthiest we've ever been and this right. was this was a fun ride. So yeah, if I can if I can make that ride three times uh, with the three companies that I feel like are absolutely critical to this industry, uh, I'm going to be really happy with that. So give people an idea. The announcement was just made today that you're with PSE. Yep. Next six months, what are people seeing from John Dudley? 
next six months, they're gonna they're gonna see um, me try to recreate uh, my content library with current products, and current All videos. Right. Um, I've got five total archery challenges on the list. We've got four knock-on ranges. Out of those five, there's four knock-on ranges. So we'll actually be there partnering with several people to bring some very interactive and free events for our followers. Nice. Um, so, you know, I really want to be able to have a place for them to come. PSE is going to be at these events with the trailer that they're going to have the bows. We're going to be doing free clinics on, you know, how to set these things up, how to break them down. Uh, if you come by these events, you're going to be able to experience that. Um, obviously, I've got very, very big support um, from you know, some of our A-list followers, I should say, um, some of our high-end celebrity people that are, that I've all talked about this change to, and they, you know, they want to be part of this with us. So they're going to be at these events as well. And then, you know, I, I don't know. It's there's a lot of work <laughs> to come forward. I would like to design a bow where, from the top to the bottom, is designed, you know hopefully by me and our community and the and the engineers at PSE. We certainly have that ability now. Yeah. But we need to see how dealers respond to this. Um, we need to see how people respond to it. And obviously if it's, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If it's going strong, then we're gonna let it go strong. I'm very uh, passionate about I don't feel like you always have to bring brand new product to the market right. if the product is good. Sure. You know, several of the things that we sell through Knock on Archery, those things have been around a long time. And have, releases. Have I, yeah, have yeah. I made improvements and, and tweaks to things that were already on the market, but maybe I would like to see a little di different? Yeah, we can do that, but I'm not certain that there has to be uh, a different knock on bow in six months or seven months. I feel sure. like I like to shoot a bow and get comfortable with it. And I also like to know that it's still like relevant. <laughs> you know, there's nothing worse than, than buying a bow and two weeks later you realize like that's old news. Yeah. You know, I've bought cars and, you know, I bought a car this year in 2019 and then all of a sudden I like go and they're like, oh, well, that's a new 2020. And I'm like, well, it's still 19. How is it a 2020? <laughs> uh, so, I think we're going to just be patient and methodical, but we're also going to mash the pedal on trying to take advantage of PSE wanting to market better and wanting to grow more. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I think is going to be awesome is Pete's going to allow me to actually hold clinics at PSE to where I can Excellent. just say like, hey, if you guys want to get there, just get there. This is going nice. to be free. My days of charging for seminars are over. You know, I, I don't, uh, That's incredible. where I go to work for archery, I go to work for our followers and, you know, and if, if I'm charging for something, it's going to be for a charity type event, you know, gotcha. that's just where I'm at personally. And I think a big part of why the community supports us the way that, that we are. So I'm content with that and, you know, that's I would, the way we're going forward. I would be remiss if I did not mention when PSE unveiled both of these bows just a short while ago, our pro shop manager, he put in his orders for both. Oh, so awesome. So <laughs> we at Lancaster Archery will have both of these bows as soon as we get our hands on them. Yeah. We'll certainly post out there when they come in. We'll let everybody know when they're there. Folks can come down, shoot them, test them out, buy them. We're shooting, um, we're shooting for... Uh for late February is what we're Late February, for. Yep. gotcha. Yep. Well, we're certainly excited. John, we couldn't be happier for you and all you've done. Knock On has always been an important brand to us yeah. at Lancaster Archery. Um, and we're just always excited to see what John and I think Dudley's I'm up be to. Doing something with you guys either right before or right after the Pennsylvania TAC. Uh, okay. The TACs that I'll be out will be uh, Pennsylvania, San Antonio, Colorado, uh, Big Sky, and Park City. So Great. yeah, we're definitely gonna have a free customer experience event at Lancaster. Uh, before that, I'm gonna try to put on a cool party for you guys, so we'll have to work through the details of that. For the couple of people out there who maybe don't know where to John Dudley, let's tell them where they can follow you on all your social media. Uh, knockontv.com, uh, or sorry, knockontv for Instagram, 
Knock on Archery for YouTube or go to knockonarchery.com website. So Perfect. that's where it's at. Thanks, John. We sure appreciate you being here yeah, today. Thank you. Folks, again, stay tuned. When we get these bows in our hands, we're going to let you know that we have them in the shop. And as always, if you have any questions about us, Lancaster Archery, you can visit us at LancasterArchery.com.